Drift Truck t-shirts are only available for a couple more days. So get them while they're still available. All the proceeds from these shirts go directly back into the channel. So thank you guys. Thank you so much for the support. Enjoy the video. Ooh, who's excited? Look at these shoes, dude. Check it out, guys. Just Basha here trying to pretend that he's rich. <laughs> Those are some baller shoes, dude. So, finally, the first drift event with the truck is this weekend. It's a weekend event, so it's Saturday and Sunday. It's a pretty big event. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be awesome. But the truck isn't ready, so. We have a lot of things to do. Number one is an LSD. Obviously, right now it's an open diff and it's one wheel peeling. We got a coolant temp gauge. We have to, we have to switch. We have to do, 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 do. I gotta switch up the gas tank vents. I gotta change the clutch spring and bleed the clutch. Hydro e-brake. I know I, I said I didn't want to install the hydro for the first event, but I figured I might as well install it. In that case, if I want it, it's there. We need to bleed the brakes if we do the hydro. I need to get spare tires, which I already did. So these are some decagrams with some just cheap burner tires. I wanna make a harness bar and harnesses so I don't have the stock seat belt. I wanna add a passenger seat because there's no passenger seat that's bolted down. Right now, I don't, I don't think I said fire extinguisher mount. I need to mount the fire extinguisher so it's not flying all over the place. But that's a lot of stuff to do in four days, so we're gonna get started. Today we're doing the LSD. Look at this. I got a Ford Performance box. And Ford Performance stickers. You bet I'm gonna put these on my Mazda. This is a clutch type LSD, essentially like an OEM LSD out of the Ford A8 with carbon fiber clutches. As far as I know, it's a completely bolt-in scenario. So we just unbolt the open diff, bolt this in, put everything back together and it should be good. But I don't know. So that's why we're doing that today in case if we need to order stuff, we can order it now and hopefully get it by the end of the week. Huge thanks to you guys for helping me be able to get this with the Drift Truck t-shirts. Speaking of which, you probably, do, 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 do. <laughs> let's install it. Pasha, do you actually want to help this time? Not saying you don't normally help, but you can do stuff. I will do stuff. Okay, I want you to unbolt the wheels and take off the brakes. Okay. That's okay. fine. Cool. As I'm aware, I just have to pull the axles out a little bit, unbolt both the bearings, and this entire thing should come out. I'm not, I'm not positive though, so we'll find out. See how that took like two minutes? Remember how last time it took like two weeks? <laughs> I didn't have to take the axles all the way out, just enough so they're not in the diff. Now I unbolt those and I think it should come out. Oh, yeah, it wants to come out. Okay. Well, it does? It does. Is it heavy? Yes. Very. Oh, oh. the bearings are coming off. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'll hold this side. The one that I gave you last. I did some research and most places said that I could reuse these bearings, but they probably wouldn't last very long. Went to the parts store and I got some new bearings for the new carrier. Here they are. Now, ideally I'd have a press and I'd press these on, but I don't have a press. So I'm gonna heat this bearing up for a while and then hopefully it will just slide right on there because it's really close.
Okay, so now that that's out, I can put the axes back in. So you can see both the ends of the axles are in, both the C-clips are in. So now I can turn the diff. And now I put the pin back in. And boom, LSD is installed. I just have to seal the diff up and then it should be good. It's now the Tuesday before the drift event. The differential is all assembled. All we have to do is put fluid in. Now this is a special differential because it needs friction modifier. I don't exactly know what this is, but it's essentially something that you need for limited slip differentials. One really shitty thing about this weekend, this drift event up in Shawano, is that every time I check the forecast, it gets worse and worse. A week ago, it said it was gonna be 65 degrees and partly sunny. Now, let's see here, April 27th, uh-huh. A high of 48 degrees and 80% chance of rain. Mmm, low of 33, which is literally freezing, almost, close enough. It's it's freezing. The last two weeks have been beautiful, and then, of course, the, the weekend of the drift event, it's poop. But whatever. Let's go ahead and uh, put this diff fluid in. There we go, the diff is full. I am noticing it's slightly harder to turn the drive shaft than it was before. I'm hoping it's just because the new bearings and stuff have to kind of break in, and I'm hoping it's not because I installed it incorrectly. <laughs> Since we are under here, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly change the gas tank vent. Right now, it's just the hose. The problem is that it's actually lower than the gas tank, so if I fill up the gas tank all the way, I'm afraid it might slosh and spill out of that. So I'm gonna have a hose going up to a charcoal canister in the bed with a little air breather on it. goes to a vent on the tank, which goes into this charcoal canister, and there is a little filter on the top of that charcoal canister. So even if fuel gets into the line, it has to come up from the gas tank into here, up through the filter. So there's, there's no way liquid fuel is gonna get out of there. And well, yeah, I needed some sort of uh, vent, so that's that. The last thing I wanna do before driving this thing is to try to fix this clutch. So the problem is that the spring and the stock clutch pedal is just super worn out. So when you push the clutch down, it doesn't come back. I mean, it does, but like it, it barely, barely comes back. If you're trying to start driving from a stop, it's really hard to do it smoothly because the clutch just, it doesn't come up smoothly. I put a clutch spring from a Miata just kind of on it, just kind of like tried to finagle it on there and it helped, it definitely helped, but it's still not quite right. When I was at Menards, I bought another spring. So I'm gonna put this on the clutch pedal. Hopefully this will be like a temporary fix. So the problem about adding a spring to this clutch pedal is that there's nowhere for the spring to hook onto that's actually on the chassis. So what I did is I made a little bracket that bolts to the frame of the dashboard and allows the spring to just hook onto that and then hook onto the clutch. So it's a nice straight spring. It's a little bit stretched out even when the pedal's all the way up. So there's some preload on it and you can push it all the way down, pull it all the way back up. It feels smoother, still not great. Hopefully that's the clutch situation all sorted. Now, one of the most important things I want to do before the drift event, the ECU knows the coolant tip because of the coolant temp sensor on the engine, but the dashboard is old and can't communicate with the, the ECU. So when I'm driving, I have no idea what the coolant temp is unless if I hook up my laptop. To fix that, I went ahead and purchased an AM, oh, Whoa, that was kind of cool. It's an AM coolant temp gauge. So 
This will allow me to know what the coolant temperature is and it will look cool. Sticker, gotta keep that. Structure and manual. Ain't that cool. Really glad I drained the coolant before doing that. Wow, it's got coolant everywhere. Damn it! Why you do this? We had to go to the store to get a tap and the right drill bit, but we got that. So we're gonna go ahead, drill a hole in the cast aluminum right there. So the, the bad boy is gonna be sitting like this and then we're gonna tap it. And then we gotta wire everything in. I've already kind of started to run the wires. That's what this bad boy is, so. Now that the actual sensor is in and the, the wires ran through the interior, Jared is working on doing the wiring for the gauges. And then I am gonna be working on making another actual little gauge pod. Pretty much, it's just some two and a half inch exhaust piping. I cut two inches of it. Then I just use some 16 gauge steel to make a little mount, put the thing in and paint it. And yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Jared thinks he's ready to test this bad boy, so we'll find out if he's worth anything. The sensor's working, um, it's just always on, so I guess the cigarette lighter in this car is always on, so we'll find something else. We'll just kind of go through all the fuses and figure out which one's which, so oh, there we go. imitating the noises it's making. I was hoping you'd do it again. The hardest part is clicking it in. Sixty-seven degree water temp. We had a quick crisis where my JB welded fuel line started to leak. No surprise. But I just happened to have the correct AM lines laying around to go from a 3 16 to 5 16 hose barb. So boom, crisis averted. Now we can start it, bleed the coolant. Keep an eye out and see if anything leaks from here too. That's solid. Oh, and over here we have our coolant temp and our AFRs. A little rich right now, it's warming up. Uh, 163. Coolant can work. Oh, that's what I need to do. I'm gonna have to adjust the clutch a little bit. The question is where to put the clutch pedal. Where the... I think the clutch pedal's down there. <laughs> where? Damn it, where did I put the clutch pedal? That's dope. It's so cool being able to see like the exact engine temperature all the time. Little clutch bit. pedal that definitely feels better. Yeah, that's. Smooth. I still don't think it's great. That that stock spring definitely makes the 
pedal just feel bunk. Well, you don't have the stock spring in anymore, right? It's yeah, just no, it, no, it's, it's oh, still the stock okay. spring. There's no way to remove that really without removing the entire pedal. So the cool thing about this gauge is that we can actually set a warning. So once it gets to a certain temperature, it will flash and beep. Actually, I don't know if it will beep. I, I know it flashes though. I don't hear anything coming from the diff. Sound feels sounds, solid. sounds great. I can't really tell if that spun both the wheels. I can't tell either. Oh, this is a hill start. The clutch was so bad that I was like afraid of hill starts again. Like it was like I was back to. Uh, I was afraid of your hill starting. Yeah. When I was in the car. I think it is because it, it gets a little bit of wheel hop, which. Well, you get wheel hop, like, but like, like I, I can feel it, the entire car. Yeah, shift all right. Second gear. And... Yeah. Hell yeah, that sounds so good. Oh, great. Brakes aren't great, but uh, oh, the power is good. And it's cool, like, after a pull, you see the temp go up a little bit. All the way up to 196, 197, 198! And I'll go back down. Cool, well, I'm gonna keep driving it, hopefully breaking the diff a little bit more, but I, I, think it's, I think it's locking up. All right, well, truck's working, diff, all the other stuff, that's awesome. Still got more to do, though.